Hi everyone, my name is Matt Williams. I'm a tutor in politics here at Jesus College at the University of Oxford. I'm also what's known as the Access Fellow here at this college. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about what colleges are, why they exist, and crucially, how you're supposed to choose them. I will even go through a quick tour of all of the colleges you can apply to as an undergraduate student, just to give you my take on, on them. I've taught for 26 of Oxford's 30 undergraduate colleges and six private halls. So I've got some experience at working at several different colleges and I'm aware that it's one of the most confusing aspects of the admissions process because it's so unusual. Most universities are not split up into colleges. So what even are colleges and why do they exist? Well I've got this this little presentation that you can follow along with on Google Earth if you like that shows you all of the colleges and halls at Oxford. There are 39 colleges at the university, 30 of which are for undergraduate students, nine of which are for postgraduate students, and there are six what are called permanent private halls, which are like colleges but much smaller. And you can see them all dotted around the university. So the circular building in the middle of the picture is called the Radcliffe Camera, and these buildings around it that have little quadrangles that you may be able to see, these are colleges. So Directly next to the rank of camera here is Brasenose College. On the other side is All Souls College. Brasenose is for undergraduates, All Souls is for postgraduates and researchers. So that gives you a sense of the different colleges. What are they? Well, they're a bit like small campuses. So the University of Oxford has a population of students around 21, 22,000. And it's divided up into these small campuses that have members numbering about five to 600 each. I work here in Jesus College. In fact, right now I'm speaking to you from almost exactly here. Uh, and we have a population of about 550, 600 students. And so we look after the teaching arrangements, the, the living uh, accommodation, the food and the welfare of the people that are members of Jesus College. But all members of Jesus College are also members of the University of Oxford. And that's the same for all members of all the colleges. Now, why is the university split into colleges like this? Well, it's down to history. The university has been teaching people for about 900 years. And it slowly generated these colleges as a way to be more efficient initially. So when the university was first founded, there were groups of scholars that were working somewhat independently. And they started to coalesce in halls initially. And then later, when there was more money available into colleges, the first college is this one here, University College, or at least there's some dispute as to that. But most people tend to agree that that is the first ever college. The most recent college was founded just a couple of years ago. It's called Rubin College, and it's a postgraduate college. Most of the colleges offer most of the subjects, so it's not the case that some colleges are for one particular subject. So it's not a law college, so it's not a medicine college. All of the colleges do pretty much everything, with some exceptions amongst the postgraduate colleges. So you're not picking a college based on whether or not they can teach you your chosen subject. You choose colleges more on social and financial matters that I'll discuss in more detail shortly. You don't choose them based on which will give you the best education because all of the colleges share the university facilities. And at the end of your studies, you get a degree from this building here called the Sheldonian Theatre, which is where you graduate. And that will be administered by the University of Oxford. It doesn't matter which college you are a member of, you get the same bit of paper at the end of it. So you're not choosing colleges based on which will give you the most Oxford of Oxford educations because they are all the same. You're choosing them in terms of, as I mentioned, accommodation facilities, financial support, amenities, things like that. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what and why we have colleges at Oxford University. So what about how to choose colleges? Well, the first and important thing to note is that you don't have to choose a college. You can do what's called an open application, which means that you allow the university to choose a college for you. A college choice has to be made because technically the colleges admit you to the university if you're an undergraduate, not the university itself. But if you can't decide, if you have no preference, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't give you any greater advantage or disadvantage if you pick a particular college or if you don't. And that's because we use a, a pooling system to share applications between colleges. So let's say, for example, you do pick a college and it happens to be a very popular college and you just didn't happen to know that, then we will potentially reassign your application to another college so that they can have a look at it. It's in fact the same mechanism that will happen if you put in an open application. So effectively the same result occurs. The best students with the most competitive applications will be admitted to the University of Oxford regardless of whether they choose a particularly popular college or indeed whether they choose not to pick a college at all. So the upshot of that is you shouldn't over overthink college choice. It's not terribly, it's not at all impactful on your academic outcomes because you get the same degree regardless of which college you end up at, provided they can offer your degree course. And also the chances of you being admitted to the university are equal regardless of whether you put in an open application or pick a, a specific college. So 
don't sort of try and be too strategic. You don't need to look into all the numbers of which colleges get more or fewer applications and start to worry about whether or not your likelihood of getting into the university will be impacted by college choice. We've put steps in place to make that not the case. Okay, there's useful information on all the colleges on the university website, which you can go through. I'll put a link in the description. And it's well worth sort of having a look at these. Perhaps the most useful in particular is going to be this page, which describes the college facilities, because that's the sort of basis that you should be comparing colleges on. First of all, make sure the college, should, a college offers the degree programme you're looking for. And most popular degrees are offered by all of the undergraduate colleges, but there will be some that won't be able to offer certain degrees for certain for various reasons. And next, you want to look at various facilities. So things like whether or not they will offer you accommodation for the whole of your studies, whether or not they have certain amenities that you're looking for, like a gym on site, or whether you want 24 hour library access and, and so forth. And so you can see from this table what how the colleges compare. You'll also notice that the colleges are pretty similar in regards to these facilities. So it's not necessarily going to be the easiest way of delimiting your choices. What I would suggest is be careful in looking up what other people have said about the colleges because there's quite a lot of myth making out there. As, as mentioned, I've taught for 26 of the colleges and halls and the students are brilliant at all of them. The colleges are fantastic communities. So you will perhaps be misled if, for example, you believe what is said about College A being terribly sporty and College B being very political or College C being very snobby and posh. Those differences just don't really tend to show up that clearly. It, sometimes they might call it uh, uh, those that apply to colleges might sort of lean into that sense of the college's perceived personality but given that those colleges are actually large and diverse communities it's very unlikely that you won't find people that you'll get along with at any college and of course you're not bound to your college you know you'll be taught at several colleges in order to make sure that you get the education you need so even though i teach at jesus college i'm currently teaching students at worcester college and merton college and that's not at all unusual and of course, socially, you're not bound to your college either. And there are many clubs and societies that are university wide. So again, I wouldn't overthink college choice. It's not a terribly impactful part of the application process. And more important are going to be your admissions tests, if you have those, preparing for interviews, writing a good personal statement, that sort of stuff. And that's the sort of stuff that you ought to invest more of your time in, I would have thought. So now I'm going to go through all of the colleges in turn, in reverse order of age. So starting with the youngest college and private halls and going through to the oldest. Okay, and I'm just going to give you a few quick notes on each of them from my own experiences and perspective. I'm not going to tell you anything bad about any of the colleges because to be blunt, there isn't really anything systematically bad about any of the colleges. And as I mentioned previously, there a lot of there's a lot of talk out there about the strengths and weaknesses of different colleges and frankly most of it's just hot air and fairly misleading. So let's start with the youngest of all the colleges, which is St Catharines. St Catharines is modern by Oxford standards, founded in the 1960s. It's got a really big site, it's got modern buildings, it's got modern facilities, and it's really well located. It's right next to some of the big departments. So this is the politics and international relations and economics building here, this white sort of sugar cube thing. And you're also next to the English and law faculties. So really well located, lovely modern amenities, great college. Okay, next up, the next youngest is St. Peter's College, much more in the city centre. It's got a really huge, beautiful chapel. It's very close to uh, institutions like the Oxford Union, which is a debating society. Uh, somewhat smaller in terms of physical size than St. Catharines, but again, still an Oxford College. You still get the same university experience pretty much, so don't over overthink some of these, I would say, minor differences. St. So Bennett's Hall is the first of the private halls that we'll be considering. Physically very small compared to some of the colleges uh, and student numbers also much smaller than many of the other colleges, but fantastic location near an area of Oxford called Jericho, which has some really nice shops and bars and restaurants and things like that. And again, regardless of the size, if it offers your course, you're going to get the same fantastic Oxford education there. So do have a think about some of the private halls as well. Next up, we've got St Hilda's College. St Hilda's I have a very fond uh, association with because it's where I got my first uh, teaching job. It's got this beautiful riverside location and uh, some nice old buildings, but also some really modern, fresh buildings as well. Fantastic place. It used to be a women's only college, but uh, was the last to go mixed in 2008 and has been mixed ever since. Next up, we have got uh, Mansfield College. Mansfield College is another college that I've been privileged to teach for. Mansfield is known uh, for being somewhat uh, non-conformist. I mean, it was literally a non-conformist in terms of its religious 
affiliations in the past. These days, all of the colleges are secular, so you don't need to worry about any particular religious affiliations. Uh, but Mansfield is also non-conformist in a more general sense of being of being very diverse and having long been very diverse uh, by Oxford standards. It has a very high proportion of state school students, for example, from UK schools and uh, is therefore some would consider to be perhaps one of the, the least Oxford-like Oxford colleges. But as I've hopefully communicated in other videos, all of the Oxford colleges are increasingly diverse and aspire to take the best students regardless of their school background or demog demography. But Mansfield is somewhat ahead of the curve, I think it would be so, fair to say. So Hughes College is the most physically distant of the Oxford Colleges from the city centre. But as a consequence of that, it has these amazing, beautiful gardens. It's really quiet and lovely and peaceful, uh, and it's a beautiful place. So don't allow it sort of physical distance from the city centre to put you off. It's, it's only about a 15, 20 minute walk and about a five minute cycle ride. So it's really not that far out, I wouldn't have said. Somerville College is much closer to the city centre and in fact is right next door to some key departments like the Maths Institute, the Humanities Department. Um, it's another previously women-only college, but is now uh, mixed and has been for, for some time. St Anne's College is another formerly women's-only college, very close to St Hilda, um, to Somerville. Um, really interesting and I think beautiful mixture of architectures, uh, including some very modern buildings, great facilities and amenities, and fantastic location right in the middle of the science area. Okay, and then Lady Margaret Hall, it says Lady Margaret Hall guest rooms, but it is a college at the university, uh, was the first of the women's only colleges to be founded in the 19th century, um, but it is now, as with all the colleges, mixed by gender. Um, it is, as you can see, right next to the university park, so it's got this amazing green uh, greenery on its doorstep. It's also next to the River Cherwell, so it's a beautiful riverside, so really nice if you want a college that is a little bit quieter and surrounded by beautiful countryside and greenery. So after Lady Margaret Hall, we are whizzing over to Wycliffe Hall. Wycliffe Hall is one of the permanent private halls, so even though Lady Margaret Hall is called a hall, it's actually a college, it can become a bit confusing. Later we'll come up come up with Regent's Park College, which is not a college, it's a hall. It's, it's all a bit confusing, but provided that they offer your course, I wouldn't overthink the names at all. Wycliffe Hall is still predominantly a theological college, so it's closer to the older model of how Oxford University used to be organised hundreds of years ago. But it still offers some undergraduate degrees, so it's still worth checking out if they offer your particular course. Okay, uh, Keble College uh, is unusual in terms of its appearance relative to some other Oxford colleges. Uh, it's It was described by Queen Victoria as looking a bit like um, a knitted jumper, um, but I think it's really beautiful and it's incredibly well located if you're a, a science student. It's right in the middle of the science area. Physics department is just across the road here. Computer science is just here. Engineering is all around there. So if you're into your sciences, it's very well located. And frankly, if you're into any subject, it's a great location. Okay, uh, next we've got Regents Park College, which is mentioned is a hall, although it calls itself a college. It's therefore a bit smaller than most of the colleges, but great location, right in the thick of the action, very close to Jericho, really friendly place, uh, very well worth checking out if they offer your course. Harris Manchester College is a mature students college, so this is for students that are aged 21 years or older. Um, it's a great place uh, if you're looking to come to university a little bit later than is typical for British students. It's very diverse in terms of nationality and background and really lovely place. Again, I've been very privileged to be able to teach there and had amazing students there. Okay. Uh, next we've got Worcester College. Worcester College is it's sort of almost the ideal location. It is centrally located but most people don't know it's there most tourists don't know it's there so it's very quiet and it's incredibly expansive so once you've come through the relatively small doors on the outside you get this sort of huge internal space including magnificent gardens and most notably this incredible lake it's got its own lake it's got all its sports fields on on site so Worcester is truly lovely and worth checking out. Uh, next, next we've got Pembroke College. Pembroke, again, I have very, very fond memories of Pembroke having taught there for several years. Incredible students, absolutely wonderful. It's also got these fantastic facilities because it expanded across the, the ancient city walls recently to have all of this new construction. Google Earth doesn't do it justice, but it's a really beautiful college uh, and, and just fantastic community of scholars there. Now, Wadham College, Wadham, is perhaps where my heart most fondly lies. 
because this is where I was a doctoral student. And so I spent several years here, both as a student and as a tutor. Uh, Wadham has a reputation for being quite socially progressive, which it leans into to a certain extent, but it doesn't mean that if you are perhaps not p political or not inclined to those politics that you won't get on there. It's also got a great reputation for the sciences, even though I didn't study a natural science, I studied politics, um, because in these beautiful gardens it's got the Royal Society was first founded. So Wadham is just a truly special place and very well worth checking out. Okay, and now, of course, my current employer and my, my true love, I should say, uh, Jesus College, which is known as the Friendly College. I remember before I started at Jesus College, I couldn't quite believe that one college would be more friendly than another. But there is something about, the, the, I think, the, the location of Jesus College right in the city centre, the fact that it's quite wealthy and generous with its money, uh, the fact that it can support its students with accommodation for all of their time studying, does seem to make it a really genuinely friendly place. Not that other colleges are unfriendly, but anyway, <laughs> I'm perhaps a bit biased. We've also got this huge new building under construction, which should be finished very soon, which is right next to the college buildings in the city centre. So we're very lucky to have been able to expand so much uh, recently. Okay, uh, then we've got St. John's College. St. John's College is one of the richest colleges. So again, generous financial support available. It's not to say that people at other colleges cannot access financial support. The university has financial support for the poorest students, but the richer colleges have even more uh, funding available for students from poorer backgrounds. St. John's has a really interesting mix of architectural styles. Uh, it's got big, beautiful gardens and it's got a, and um, yeah, as I say, it's, it's wealthy and uses its money to support its students. Okay, then we've got Trinity College. Trinity College is pretty much in the center of the action, but still retains large, beautiful gardens, including this amazing front quad that they've got. Um, it's known for its food amongst many things, it's got really gorgeous food. Um, I remember when I was studying, I was quite jealous that they used to have baked camembert there every, every week. I'm not sure if they still do that, but that was something that sounded pretty good to me. Okay, from Trinity College, we are going to wash to Christchurch. Christchurch is very large, very grand, quite a lot of famous films were used it as a set, including Harry Potter. It's, if you like, the most Oxford looking of Oxford colleges, if that doesn't, if that makes any sense. But as with all the Oxford colleges, you get the same education. And despite its grandeur, the students that I've worked with there have been really great down to earth. And the college, as with all the other colleges, is utterly committed to diversifying the intake at Oxford University. So don't be put off. Don't sort of think that Christchurch is going to be full of very snobby, very rich people. It's just like all the other colleges, to be frank. It is next door to the much smaller Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi should not by any means be underestimated, however. Um, it's an intellectual powerhouse. I think they've won University Challenge. Um, they've got a, a, a fantastic food, really incredible. Uh, and they've got a lovely little uh, college tortoise, or at least they did the last time I was teaching there, so I hope they still do. <laughs> then we've got Brazenose. Brazenose could lay claim to being the most centrally located college. It is right next to this round building called the Radcliffe Camera. It's absolutely stunning, fantastic location, um, really doing f amazing work on accessibility for more diverse students, in particular under the stewardship of Dr. Joe Organ, my counterpart there. So Brazenose is a, just a fantastic place that you should check out. Okay, and now we're getting into the seriously old colleges uh, with Magdalen. Magdalen is another very large, very impressive place, beautiful buildings. It's got a deer park uh, for, for reasons that I'm not quite clear on, but it's also got a riverside location, beautiful greenery, uh, really stunning place. But again, don't be put off by that. Don't sort of feel intimidated if you if you like Magdalen College, it's not going to be full of any particular type of person. It's a very diverse community. Uh, they are very supportive of their students from disadvantaged backgrounds. And um, if you do apply, it's not likely to affect your chance of getting into Oxford. So don't be sort of put off applying if you think it's going to be popular, because it is popular. Uh, next, we've got Lincoln College. Lincoln College is our neighbor on Turl Street. It is quite physically small, or at least it looks small, but it's actually occupied a lot of the buildings around it. So for example, this this former chapel church here is now Lincoln College Library, and they've occupied the buildings on the other side of the road to them. So even though the, the college site looks quite small, they've actually economised with the space really cleverly. 
and taken up lots of room. Uh, Lincoln is, is, as with all the other colleges, beautiful with lovely people. I mean, I know that's just becoming what I'm saying about all of them, but it is true. Um, New College next is incredibly misnamed because it is uh, very old. Uh, it was founded in the 1300s. Again, highly impressive, used a lot in filming, uh, including Harry Potter and Mamma Mia, um, because of its spectacular architecture. It does consistently well on what's called the Norrington table, which is the table of colleges by their academic performance in finals exams. Um, but again, all of the colleges tend to do very well in that. So you're, you're not going to get a significantly better education. It's just New College has some very particularly good academic facilities and good support. And it also creates this culture of working hard academically, which has rewarded them in good results consistently. Okay, next we've got Queen's College, which is right on the high street. Queen's College is architecturally quite unique. It's a sort of neoclassical style, uh, as opposed to the more Gothic style, which is typical of the older colleges, um, but no less beautiful for that. It's got a subterranean library, which is incredible. It's also got this beautiful, big indoor library as well, an old library. So really spectacular buildings. Again, I've been very privileged to teach there. Students were, were amazing. So lovely place, well worth uh, looking into. Now we've got Oriel College. <clears throat> so this now we're getting to the sort of really seriously old colleges. Oriel College um, is again sort of seemingly quite small but again has occupied spaces around it in order to make sure that it has enough room for its purposes. Um, it's had some, because it's been around for so long, it's had some interesting alumni including Walter Riley, the guy who brought potatoes and tobacco back to the back to the Europe from the New World. Um, so fascinating place. Okay, next we have got Exeter College. Exeter College is one of our neighbours on Tell Street in Oxford. It uh, is Jordan College in the mythical His Dark Materials universe created by Philip Pullman, because Philip Pullman was a student there, as was J.R.R. Tolkien, so it's got some good literary credentials. Then we've got Hartford College. Hartford College has the iconic Bridge of Sighs, which is often associated with the university. Hartford College, like Wadham College, is known as being quite a progressive, socially liberal place, but again, all colleges have diverse communities, so whether or not that suits you or not, I wouldn't read too much into it. Then we've got St Edmund Hall. St Edmund Hall is one of the oldest in terms of its organisation of the university, so it's one of its closest to the way the university was organised when it was first founded. Um, really small by the stand scale of colleges around it, but nonetheless beautiful for it and still, again, as always, gives you the same fantastic education. Then we have got Merton College. Merton College is notorious for having fantastic academic results consistently in the Norrington table of performance in finals. Um, but it also has incredibly good food, I can tell you from personal experience. So those are things to consider, but again, you know, weigh them up with all sorts of other bits of information and don't read too much into it would be my advice. Then we've got Balliol College. Balliol is another college that's renowned for being quite political. It's certainly produced a lot of senior politicians from the UK and overseas of all political stripes, I might, I must add, um, but uh, also great location and very friendly place. It's got the, it's got a student run bar, which is quite unusual for Oxford colleges. And then last, but obviously not least is university college. Again, very sort of happy to say that I was able to teach here for several years and do admissions here. Loved it. Really fantastic place. Such a friendly community, um, amazing location right in the city center. Uh, and, it's got this beautiful shrine to Percy Shelley, the, the poet, um, amongst its many sort of wonderful amenities. So amazing place. So those are all of the colleges that you can apply to as an undergraduate. I'm finishing on the Bodleian Library simply to underscore a point that all of the colleges and all of the halls get to use all of the university facilities. You ultimately get a university degree. So I wouldn't over sweat college choice too much. Look into the sort of facilities that are available, think about the accommodation provision, think about any financial support that may be available for you. But ultimately, college choice won't impact your chance of getting into the university and it won't impact the quality of your education, which will be absolutely first class regardless of which college or hall you end up at. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions that emerge out of watching this, then do drop them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. This is part of an ongoing series of videos to help support students that maybe don't have access to such information, get it and make the most informed applications to the University of Oxford. Thank you for watching. Take care. All the best. Bye now. Thanks.